I'm Tom Lukasik. I'm with four kids. So four kids, we're all about finding hope, homes, and healing for the kids in foster care. And we do that through a variety of ways. And foster homes is one of those main ways, of course. The foster care crisis in this country has been astronomical for many, many years. And one of the reasons is I believe the church has not been a part of helping solve that crisis. The numbers are staggering, well over 400,000 children in foster care, well over 100,000 waiting and ready to be adopted right now. So when the church hears orphan care, sometimes we forget that that's, there's an orphan care problem right here in our country. So one of the ways that we can fix that problem, solve the crisis, is mobilize the church. The church is the answer. There's just about the same number of churches in the country as there are kids waiting to be adopted. So we can fix this. We can solve this crisis. So what Four Kids is kind of known for in our community is mobilizing the church community. For many years in Florida, the church and the state just didn't want to mix, didn't mix, and quite frankly, the church was afraid to get involved because they didn't want to be partnering with the state. So Four Kids was able to educate the church, partner with the state, ask how we can help. We already knew the answer would be we need more foster homes, and that's what we wanted to be able to do is provide those homes. So we've been able to recruit literally thousands of homes over the last 20 years to help be an answer to this problem, this crisis. And one of the ways we do that is we just educate the church, encourage the church, exhort the church, and then engage the church with the children in the foster care system. The stories in foster care are many of people that are sitting in pews, sitting in churches, and hearing maybe for the first time that there is an issue in our, our community. And sometimes you just touch someone's heart and they realize, oh my gosh, we can be part of the solution to this. And we have one uh, couple that I can think of that was involved in a very high level area. They were trying to connect churches and government uh, organizations and making sure that on a high level they were helping solve the crisis. But then as they got closer and closer involved and closer and closer to the children, they decided, hey, let's take a chance and see what happens if we get licensed as foster parents. So as things kind of work out in this whole foster care world, they did that. They started taking kids in and they did a great job when it came to reunification because they were able to help single moms, help those moms that were trying to get their kids back because of their connections. They were able to get furniture, sometimes a car, to make sure that mom had what she needed to be successful and not just uh, potentially flounder out there with her child. And then one of those children came through and mom couldn't get her case plan in order and she couldn't get her act together and this couple ended up adopting this little girl about three years ago and you look at them now and they are one of the happiest little families they've got grown adult children and uh, this little girl that's just part of their family who happens to be of a different culture than theirs so it's a little obvious that uh, she's an adopted child but it's such a blessing to see that people when they step out of their comfort zone and just trust God and wait on God and wait upon the Lord that amazing miraculous things can happen and now this little girl has her forever family and that cycle is broken. There's one common misconception in foster care that most of the kids that come into foster care it's because of something they did. I read a statistic years ago and I can't cite it but the general public believes 86% uh, of the general public believes that kids are coming into foster care because of something the child did wrong and it's just the opposite. It's something that was done wrong to that child. So that starts a problem right there because families are just sometimes unwilling to step in when they think there's a problem with the child. So one of the things we're trying to do again is educate the church, educate the community, to let them know that this is an issue that's right here in our backyard. And we're not asking people to solve the problem in this country or even in the state, but try to help out in your zip code. Try to help out where your church community lives and you can make an eternal difference in a child's life. So Four Kids started as a movement out of one church 20 years ago. And in that time, we've been able to minister to more than 25,000 children. We've had nearly 600 adoptions. And in those adoptions, we have not had a single failed adoption. So people want to know how is that happening. So we get calls all the time from different parts of the country. Right now we serve six counties on the southeast coast of Florida, from Broward County up to Indian River County and over to Okeechobee County and all those in between. And most people I'm talking to have no idea what I'm talking about right now. <laughs> but it's the southeast uh, part of Florida is where we serve. Uh, but 
because we've been involved in the Christian Alliance for Orphans and now here at Q, people are starting to hear what has happened through 4Kids and they want to know how they can do the same thing. So we've had opportunities to help organizations all over the country and even in uh, international organizations and to kind of teach them the 4Kids model, how this works, how to mobilize the church, how to partner with the state, how to bring the whole church around this child to make sure that we can help that child find hope and healing. And there is a 4Kids of South Texas right now in San Antonio, Texas, and we are talking to the folks in Austin area as we speak about possibly a 4Kids Central Texas that would be the Austin and Waco area. So we're, we're open to whatever God has for us and what's next, and we're just waiting to hear from him. We're not advertising, we're not seeking um, to go out and conquer the world, but we have something that is working, and we don't want to hide that under a basket. When it comes to inspiring generosity, this whole 4Kids movement is, exists because of generous people. And we need people that from all areas of the body of Christ and all areas of the community to use their time, talents, and treasures. And one thing that we do that kind of sets 4Kids apart as well is we get some government funding, but only about 35% of the funding we get is government. The rest has to come from the private community, the private individuals. And it's an opportunity for somebody who may not be able to say, I can take a child in, but they can say, I can help you take that child in. And through those gifts, we have, uh, we, we've just been able to <laughs> accomplish so much and we couldn't do it without that. Because through those gifts, we can do a little bit more care than the average foster care agency. We can provide a little extra support. We can step outside of the contract. One of the problems with a government contract sometimes is you've got a sibling group of three that need help and we find out their brother needs help but he doesn't fit our contractual obligations. So if we're just contracting with state dollars, we could get in trouble for helping that young man. But since we have private dollars, we can reach out. And when people are generous to support ministries like 4Kids and others, that gives us the freedom to help where that help is needed and not be stuck in a, in a bubble or a silo of that type of help. And one thing I'd be remiss if I didn't mention is this whole organization is, exists today because of one foundation in South Florida that decided to invest in this movement 20 years ago and get this rolling to a point where now we have served 25,000 children. I don't even think they thought it would ever be as big as it has gotten, but it has been a huge investment and, uh, and there's treasures in heaven for all of those people. So children are removed from their homes for a variety of reasons. Generally it's abuse, neglect, or abandonment. Right now the opioid crisis is causing a lot more children to have to come into the foster care system, removed from their own homes, taken away from their mommy and daddy, traumatized because of that, and then we need to be there as a safety net to help them through that. So that's what we're trying to do. And that's what's happening again here in your own community. It's, it's not a third world issue, it's a South Florida issue, it's a Nashville issue, it's a Colorado Springs issue, it's a Chicago issue, it's wh wherever you look in this country there's a problem and we need to be there to help them. So we've got so many amazing success stories of kids' lives who have been changed and kids' lives who have been saved in many different ways. And we had one young lady who was in one of our uh, homes for teenage girls and she wanted to be adopted and she went to her pastor and let him know that she was really wanted to be adopted at 16. At that age, the state usually kind of puts an unofficial qualifier on that age saying they're unadoptable because they're too old and most people want the cute little kid and they don't want to take a teenager. Uh, but this girl prayed, asked the Lord, asked her pastor, and not too, not too long after that, a couple from that church uh, who were working in the church, a teacher and a pastor in the church, was, they were able to come together and now that child is adopted, now that child is a young adult, now that child is a graduate from Moody Bible Institute, now that child is no longer a child, she's uh, working to finish up her master's degree and she will be graduating any day now, and now that child is working for us, giving back to the system, because the system, this system, the church part of the system helped her and now she wants to help others.